Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we are going to explore how to use surfaces to generate WASP fields. What we are going to do as an example is we are going to create a simple aggregation based off uh, parts which are nothing more than uh, rectangular blocks but which can be uh, taught as uh, the basic units of a let's say aggregation simulating an urban settlement. And what we're going to be trying to do is we're going to try, we're trying to create a, a field which follows a, a surface and which will make our urban agglomeration grow along this surface. If you go on and download the Rhino and Grasshopper files that you find in the description, you will find that the Rhino file contains fundamentally two elements, a surface, which is going to be our driver, and the unit itself. And if you open the Grasshopper work file, you'll see that I already created for you the, uh, the part. So in the part we have a geometry, which is the basic box, and then we have connections which are organized in sides, top and bottom, as well as we have a little attribute that stores some more detailed geometry which contains windows and doors, which will define our unit. Now what we want to do with this uh, with this aggregation is we want to grow it along the surface. If we want this to uh, convincingly mimic a urban aggregation, an urban agglomeration, we have to take care of two things. The first thing is we have to take care that our field, which is going to be based on the distance from the surface, will be growing just on the upper part of the surface because if we build a field that is based on the distance from this surface, blocks will be growing both on top and on the bottom. So we're going to first of all create a f make sure that all the points of our field which are below the surface will be at zero. And then we are going to also want to make sure that uh, our blocks grow following the surface instead of just flying away in space. Let's get started. We're going to start by creating a geometry component and importing our surface. So we right click, set one geometry and select our surface. We can then select it and hide it in Rhino. And as we did in the previous tutorial, which you will find linked uh, in, in the link here below, and uh, you, we're going to start by uh, creating our the boundaries for our fields. And to do that, we're going to create a, a bounding box for our surface. And then as we want our aggregation to grow a little bit beyond these boundaries, we are going to also um, create a scale and new component in order to scale this box in a non-uniform way. In this case, we are going to connect our box. We are going to want to get the center of this box with the volume component. I'm going to connect it. And then we're going to keep the X and Y like this because we want our blocks to stay on top of the surface and not fly out of it. But we are going to instead increase a little bit the Z to, let's say, 1.5 or maybe even 2. Great, we have our boundaries and now the next step is to create uh, our field points. As we saw in the last tutorial, we do that with uh, field points component, which we cannot find, but we can just find in the WASP tab. So we go under aggregation, field points. We are going to connect our boundary. And then by default, we will get this very low resolution. And we want to increase this a bit. So we can check here that the resolution is default to 11. And let's say that we're going to set it to, for example, 2.5. That might be a bit dense. So let's maybe go to 3. This looks all right. Uh, okay, now that we have our points, we have to first of all, maybe we hide a bit of stuff. We're going to have to separate our points between points that sit below the surface and points that sit on top of the surface. To do that, we are going to first of all find the closest point of each point on top of the surface and then compare the Z height of this point versus the Z height of the points of the closest point on the surface. And for geometric reasons, we can be sure that if the Z of the point, the, of the closest point is higher than the point itself, this point actually sits below the surface and not on top of it. We are gonna, let's go on and do it. First, we are gonna do a 
pull point component as we have done in the previous tutorial as well. Where we're gonna connect our points. I'm gonna move it a bit low and our surface. So now we're gonna get all our points on the surface. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna deconstruct the base points and the points that we pulled on the surface. And the points we put on the surface and compare it with a smaller than component. If now, this is gonna actually now tell us if the closest point is above or below uh, the other point. And by using this, we can simply separate our points between points on top and points on the bottom of the surface. We do that with the dispatch component where we connect our points and our pattern. And now if I create just for you to see a point component and I connect A, I have all the points that sit below. And if I connect B, I have all the points that sit above. Now, the other thing that we want to do is, as we already calculated the distances, which we're going to need to create the field, let's also go on and dispatch them as well. So we copy the dispatch and replace the input L. So now here we have the points dispatched and here we have the distances. Now, how we want to create our field? Well, we want to assign for all the points that are at the bottom, we are going to assign the value zero. So our points that are at the bottom come out of A. So what we are going to do is we are going to check the length of the, li the, li the length of this list. Oops, sorry. And through this one, we know that we have 8,000 points. And then we are going to create a list of 8,000 values, which are all zero. To do that, we are going to use repeat data. We are going to put zero. in the data and L in the length. So here we go, we have 8,000 values which are all zero. From the points that instead sit on top of the surface, what we wanna do is we wanna create a field which has very high values when we are close to the surface and very low values when we go far away from the surface. How can we do that? We can do that by taking the distances which we have here and remapping them in an interval that is inverted. So we are going to say by default the distance will be really low when we are close to the surface and really high when we are far from the surface. And what we want to do is we want to invert that. We are going to do that by creating a remap component. We are going to connect our values. We are then going to get a bounce component to find minimum and maximum. And lastly, we are going to say that what we want to remap is we want to remap to a, a, ve a domain that goes from 1 to 0. So we're fundamentally going from a, ve a domain which we have from 0 to 26, and then we are going to invert it and make it go from 1 to 0. We are then going to use again a graph mapper to make the transitions a little bit sharper. using a Bezier as always. I mean, you can use some other graphs, but just a Bezier normally makes sense to make transitions a little bit sharper. And then what we have to do is we wanna reput these two values in the correct order. And to do that, we are gonna use a weave component. And what we know is that the weave component takes a pattern of zeros and ones, and we'll pick from each list, from each list according to whether this pattern is zero and one. Now, you might know that in, uh, in normal programming logic, uh, a false statement is considered a zero and a true statement is considered a one. In this way, if we use this pattern as our pattern, we know that all the true values went through A and got inverted from a zero. So we will connect this to a one and all the false values got remapped and we can connect this to a zero. In this way, we have rebuilt our list and made sure that it's in the same exact order. Great, now that we have our values, what we can do is we can first 
visualize them to see if we did everything right. And to do that, if you remember, we can use a gradient component, which we will connect to our values here. And then we are going to move everything a little bit lower. And then we're going to create a custom preview where we're going to connect our points from the wasp field point component. And then we are going to connect our colors from our map. Now maybe we change the preset to a more visual preset. And we see that that's, we did what we wanted. So all the points below the, uh, the surface are green and means that they are zero. So nothing will grow there. And the points on top, which are very close to the surface, are red, so they're showing that they have a very high value. And then as we go far away from the surface, these values decrease. Great. We can now get this below and, and hide, it, hide it for now. And let's go on and build a wasp field. We can do that by going to aggregation, wasp field. We are going to name it. And I'm going to name it this time my terrain. The namings are not really important for now. They are important just when you use multi channel fields, but that's an advanced feature that we will see in a while. So we define the name. We want to get the empty field from the wasp field points component. And then we want to get the output of our weave and place it in the values. And there we go. We have our field. Now that we have our field, we can go on and build our aggregation. Let's now come to the top, go to aggregation, field driven aggregation. We are going to connect our parts. We are going to specify the number. And again, I'm going to start from 120 parts. To specify the rules, we are going to use a rule generator. So we can go to rules, rule generator. We're going to connect it and we're going to take advantage of the different types that we have been setting here to uh, define what can connect to what. So we are going to say we're going to create a panel. Right click to uncheck multi line data and then we're going to specify what can connect to what. And let me see the names exactly there. So we have sides, bottom and top. So sides can connect only to sides. Bottom can connect to top. And top can connect to bottom. Let's now connect this to our grammar. And we get all our rules automatically calculated. We can then connect those two rules. And lastly, we are going to go get our field, which we just created, and connect it to the field input. Oops. Great. Lastly, we're going to create a button to allow us to reset the aggregation. And that's it. Let's go on and hide everything that we had when we created the field, except for the starting surface. And if now we go on and we um, go to parts and get part geometry, you see that we effectively created a set of parts that grow on top of our surface. Uh, we also remember that I also prepared for you a stored geometry that has a schematic representation of a housing block. So instead of using the part geometry, let's delete that. And let's go under elements and say get attributes by name. And the attribute was called house. So let's go on and get a house element. And here we go. We have our little houses growing on the hill. If you want to have a nicer visualization, we can actually color them with a few random colors. And let's, for example, create three swatches. I'm going to create one, two, three. And I'm going to assign them three colors. Uh, 
and then merge them in a list. And what we want to do is we want to randomly pick one of those given uh, for each of these parts. So to do that, we're going to create a random component. In order to know how many parts we have, we're going to just get our slider here, connect it to the number of parts. And then we're going to say that our domain will go from 0 to 2. And this is going to create random numbers between 0 and 2. But what we can also do is we can right click and force this to use only integer numbers. So in this case, what is going to come out here is going to be either 0, 1, or 2. And if we use this with a list item, to pick elements from this list, we are going to be picking randomly one of these three colors for each of these parts. We can now then add a custom preview, connect our houses, and connect our colors. Oops, I think oh, we have to right click on geometry, sorry, and flatten that in order to have them in the same list. And here we go. We now have our little housing agglomeration which grows along our surface. Great. This was more or less what I wanted to achieve for today. So that's it. If, as always, if anything was not clear, please comment below. I'm going to try to answer as quickly as possible. Uh, if you like the video and want to keep posted, we are going to be posting many new videos in the coming days. Uh, hit the little hexagon in the corner and subscribe. And hope to see you again in the next tutorial. And thanks for watching. Bye.